Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Shark here with another 1v1 for you today, this time on the map Villa Fiore. In this match, we've got an up-and-coming player from South Korea putting a Company of Heroes veteran on his heels and making the fight go the absolute distance. Uh, playing as the Axis, we have Jeff G from South Korea, ranked number 166 with the DAC. He does not select a battle group playing pure vanilla Deutsches Africa Corps in this match. And then playing as allies, we got Red Wings, a longtime Company of Heroes veteran, uh, from America, playing as the Americans, ranked number 34 overall, using the armor battle group here. One thing I've noticed in some recent matches uh, is really highlighted for me the need to maintain pressure and then exploit the tech advantages that you get when you get them. Uh, there's a lot of risk in playing for the late game, even if you think your units are going to scale effectively and you use a lot of the tech, and this match really highlights that risk. So I hope you all enjoy. As always, links and timestamps in the description below, and with that, we'll roll on to the match. All right, everyone. So here we are on Villa Fiore, the bottom of the map on the east side. We got Jeff G playing as the DAC. And then on the west side of the map, top of the screen default view is PSG Red Wings. Uh, so he's playing as Americans and he's going to lock in armor battle group right away, and get barracks. So I expect to see Jeep soon. He's also getting a second uh, scout squad. Meanwhile, Jeff G playing as the DAC. He's got the Panzer Pioneers, the Krod Chitsen, and Panzer Grenadiers being built. No commander selection yet. So with the crowd shoots and versus the Jeep, um, I think, you know, the engagements that I've seen, it's a, it's a little bit RNG. It's kind of like a 50, 50 toss up depending on kind of how things are oriented and who gets the first couple shots in. Um, obviously the Jeep, Starts with Vet 1 thanks to the commander, which comes with a uh, slight bonus to his protection. Um, you know, in a previous cast, I saw Alpenwell basically double up the Karadshids at the start of the game. Um, in the past, we've also seen people kind of spam Jeeps, so get another Jeep out. Either one can be an option. And then, obviously, these players are, are good enough. They can scout through the fog of war using sound, uh, sound cues to figure out if the other guy has vehicles out. So second Jeep coming out for Red Wings and second Panzer Grenadier squad coming out for Jeff G. And here we go. Here's the Jeep trying to chase on the crowd shoots him. Good movement from the crowd shoots him to get back to the base. Base machine gun doing some damage and now the crowd shoots him. Looks like he's going to pursue maybe. No, it looks like a little bit of a misclick. Meanwhile, on the opposite side of the map, Panzer Pioneer is challenging the second Jeep. And the Jeep backing up here. Rod shoots in the base, repairing. Once the scouts arrive, these Panzer Pioneers are going to be hurting. Here comes Panzer Grenadier to push these scouts, but not after they decap the fuel. Jeep also fully caps up this fuel. Now the Karad shoots in and Panzer Grenadier is trying to push it off. And not a decisive engagement either way. Panzer Pioneers on the opposite side of the map. Uh, getting burned down pretty good, but the Jeep is backing up and is not in a position to, uh, to really run, try to run them down. Here now, Panzer Grenadier is moving up on the Jeep on the south side of the map. Third spot of Panzer Grenadier is coming out now for Jeff G. Oh, some good penetration shots in, and this Jeep may go down here. There it is. So a good pickup for Jeff G early. Now, even with the pickup there, Jeff G not in a great map control situation. But these Panzer Grenadiers are more than a match for the engineers here. And now, because of this push, he has an opportunity to really cap up this side of the map. Meanwhile, his other squad of Panzer Grenadiers is pushing off the sheep. Man, some of those shots hit really hard despite the vehicle's armor. And they'll hop into cover here to prevent from getting damaged. It looks like he might be trying to flank that Jeep with these two P-Grand squads, but I think Red Wings is anticipating that. Maybe not. Here they come. One one or two more shots. Oh, and there it is. 
Excellent, excellent pickup for Jeff G. A third Jeep out now for Red Wings. Man, I wonder if Red Wings wishes he could withdraw and refit. Uh, Rifles on the P-Grand just doing a great job penetrating the really light armor on the Jeep and doing a lot of damage. Crowd shoots and forced off by the scouts here. It's going to back up and repair. Enemy encroaching on us. Teams up with the Panzer Pioneers. But now this push to the Panzer Grenadiers, Jeff G has good control of the north side of the map. He really needs to pick up this fuel point when he can. An all important uh, tech control. Red Wings already has a motor pull out. It looks like he went with the mechanized support center. Interested to see where he puts down uh, his automatic repairs. So with the motor pool already on the way, Jeff G's built the light support company. But if he doesn't get some hardened AT out soon, he could be at risk of getting kind of run over by Greyhounds and other light vehicles. Interesting. How did Red Wings... Was that... Did he use the Jeep to drop a machine gun? With Vet 1 rather than capture? That'd be interesting. And then it would explain why he's keeping it in his base. Oh. Engineer is going to hit the mine here. Ratchets and tracers. Now, the Panzer Grenadiers have capped up the entire north side of the map. Now, Panzer Jaeger is on the field. The assault group coming with the 250. Red Wings trying to move out of his base here. And it looks like Jeff G is going to go for the mechanized company rather than the fire support elements. Well, scouts take some damage. And in the center of the map, the other squad of scouts getting whittled down by the crowd shoots in here. The 250 in a good position to flank this MG. Yep. MG forced to retreat. Panzer Gears don't do a ton of damage, but... You know, team weapon models only have 80 HP until they gain veterancy. And here's the Greyhound, so Panzer Grenadier is on the north side forced to retreat. Another squad of Panzer Jaegers coming out. This half track with the Panzer Jaegers on the inside is a great counter to the Greyhound. Here it comes. Well, it gets the first hit off. And Jeff Tree will back up. Great unit for pursuing light vehicles that are damaged or snared. And it looks like Red Wings is, is back in his base, just trying to kind of reset a little bit. Jeff G is now taking control of the majority of the map. And with the garage shits and capping up the fuel, is in a good spot. Here comes the Greyhound. Second squad of Pensiager is still too far away to be... Uh, decisive in this engagement. Crowd just in dodging shots from the Greyhound. <laughs> Appreciate that little bit of micro. And now he's going to finally cap up this other VP. <clears throat> Jeff G floating a fair amount of fuel here. So, you know, within a minute he could build tier 4. So he may skip kind of the mid-game entirely. Um, if he was going to go for eight rods or martyrs, you think you'd see one out on the field by now. Now both Panzerjäger squads kind of co-located. If Red Wings can figure that out, then he can move around with this Greyhound and do a fair amount of damage. Scouts capping up the north side of the map. And Jeff G basically very concentrated on the south side, allowing him to capture... Uh, Red Wings fuel here, so still really good fuel income. Here comes the half track. Panzerjägers take a couple shots, uh, but don't hit the Greyhound. And now the MG here to recap fuel for Red Wings.
AT gun getting built now for Red Wings. Oh, here comes a salvo. Panzer books of shots. But Greyhound will back out of range. Machine gun suppresses two squads of uh, Panzer Grenadiers, but the third will get in close. Greyhound's still engaging. Panzer Jaegers try to move up to sneak up a couple more shots, but they're not able to get one off. Scouts and crowd the counter capping across the remainder of the map. Alright, yep, tier four on the way out for Jeff G. Oh, AT gun hits the crowd shoots and, but doesn't manage to kill it, and the follow up shot whiffs as it moves. So the vet one and some of the armory upgrades. Although no armory upgrades available. So uh, slight bonus. Maybe the AT gun just doesn't knock out the crowd shoots in with a single shot. But obviously the vehicle survival kits add 40 health. The emergency repairs add another 80. And that can make help vehicles survive things like mines and, and that first AT gun shot. And I like here how Jeff G is keeping the half track around his infantry. Um, not really necessary, but it provides that co mechanized combat bonus that is unique to the DAC uh, faction. Try shoots and self-repairing in the corner. I like mines on the retreat path here. It's a good way of punishing overextension. Right now the Greyhound is kind of flying around on the side. Here we go. Now we see emergency repair kits and the vehicle survival package upgraded. So Jeff G trying to make sure that his vehicles can do as much damage as possible before he actually gets his first tank out on the field. Oh, scouts get annihilated by the infantry here. Half track takes a big hit from the AT gun, but not enough to knock it out. No, oh, Greyhound hits a mine and his engine crit. So it's going to be out of the fight for a minute until Red Wings can get his engineers over to repair. And I wonder, I don't see having the mechanized... I don't, yeah, I, I don't think he set up the free repairs via the mechanized uh, support center yet. Red Wings though, fully counter capping Jeff G's fuel. Now the scouts at risk of going down on retreat, oh, only one model left. Oof. Scout's knocked out. Jeff G still hasn't chosen a commander. Um, has enough fuel to get a P3 out now. But he's going straight for armored reserves. So I think he understands he's got the fuel advantage and he's basically trying to make sure that he can scale as well into the late game as possible while Red Wings is still forced to use kind of the bridging mid game units. Using all of his infantry to cap up the north side of the map, but Red Wings, right, wisely. Also counter capping on the south. Yeah, he must be using this Jeep at this point to just drop uh, machine guns. So using munitions for him rather than using manpower and building weapon support center. So the, the risk here in Jeff G waiting to build late game units is he's basically giving a ch Red Wings a chance to one, use his command points and then also build up some AT guns. So by the time that first P3 hits the field, it's not going to have um, as much of a strength like gradient or strength advantage over uh, the American units. There's a risk of you know, potentially a Greyhound being out, not a Greyhound, uh, a Jackson or a Chaffee, uh, those AT guns that'll, that'll do a lot of damage because the P3 is not the most powerful tank. Um, basically like a, you know, a light tank. Oh, a lucky shot from the Greyhound sets off the mine before it can run over it <laughs> at risk. Oh. Greyhound hits a different mine though. His engine crit is very close to hitting this mine here. 
But it'll back up. Ratchet's and getting whittled down by the machine gun here. Oh, engineers hit a mine trying to repair the Greyhound. Oh, and this infantry advance. He's got to be careful. The Greyhound can set off that mine. Oh, sticky bomb under the Greyhound. It survives. I think it's got the armored skirts. And here comes the grenade toss under the machine gun. No deaths, but a lot of damage done. And the machine gun retreats. And then one more sticky, and the Greyhound is done. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Jeff G has put a lot of resources into all of his uh, upgrades. He got the veteran squad leaders, he got the uh, tungsten ammo. Um, and so, even though he has, he's had a resource event for a long time, he's still not, you're not seeing that Panzer III. And so I think this is the biggest thing that puts him at risk. Like he obviously has good map control. He's had a good resource advantage. Although right now, Red Wings is actually recovered and has more fuel income at 28 per minute versus 18 uh, than Jeff G does. But yeah, that's my... If he's going to just stall for another six minutes to get a Tiger out, I think he's going to run the risk of being unprepared for the volume that Red Wings will be able to produce. And, and here comes the tank depot now. So with the War Machine upgrade, all of the vehicles for Red Wings are going to come out a lot cheaper. And here we go. Panzer Grenadiers back out, advancing on the Engineers. And Jeff G's been laying a lot of mines because none of his Panzer Grenadiers have the LMG upgrade. Oh, Engineers down to a single model. Panzer Jaeger is also on their retreat path. Uh, engineers go down needlessly. Now, three machine guns here for Red Wings. And it's a shame the American machine guns are so uh, terrible at suppressing. Because that's what he really needs, is the ability to counter this big infantry push. The mines are helping. So three machine guns here. He's going to spread them out. This reminds me of uh, the Maxim machine gun strategy for the Soviets in Co. 2. Get a lot of machine guns out, move them, you know, kind of in lanes where they can be mutually supporting and rapidly suppress enemy infantry and you basically just force a retreat until you can strangle the enemy off the map. Engineers and scouts are going to cap up the north side while the machine guns and the AT gun uh, advance on the south side of the map. And so Red Wings looks to be making some progress and, and starting to claw this thing back. He's got two AT guns on the field. This is where... I would say, you know, you know, <laughs> the heavy vehicles, I, if I am, I'm waiting for the heavy vehicles to come out. This long, you haven't seen a tank yet, you know, probably expect a Tiger. I would want to get a, a third AT gun. Oh, machine gun facing the wrong way. Panzer Jaegers, well, they were doing some damage to it, now they're not. Panzer Grenadiers advance stopped. Uh, by the layered machine guns, the defense in depth here from Red Wings. Jeff G really stacking up the manpower. He's got 900 floated. There he goes. But he just spent it on a rapid advance. So he's just getting all of his armory upgrades. And he is content uh, to let this game continue to go on using his, his mainly infantry heavy build here. Red Wings building a cache on this fuel point back here. He's also flooding quite a bit of manpower, and he has the ability to produce easy eights. So there's some risk here, because the easy eights are going to outclass the P3s, even with all the uh, the upgrades. Location secured. Can we get back to work now? Good, you know, decent team weapon composition here in the center. Uh, the biggest thing, this would be very susceptible to artillery. Uh, but Jeff G doesn't have any artillery on the field. He does have some options. The Town of Tree Battle Group uh, gets some heavy artillery available to it, as well as the uh, the Toad field howitzer. Uh, and then the Armored Battle Group obviously uh, has the Loiter. There you go. Panzer Grenadier is in cover, whittling away at this machine gun. Second machine gun immediately behind it, in position to suppress the other Panzer Grenadiers. 
And the, the mortar is here to add insult to injury. And another mine struck. But all the upgrades on the crotch shoots and it's barely hurt. Yeah, additional 120 health plus the ability to automatically repair. Yeah. DAC upgrades. If you can't bleed the DAC manpower, you just have to deal with these super units towards the end of the game. And Jeff G now really only about 15 seconds away from a tiger, which I imagine is what he's been waiting for. Panzer Grenadiers throw a grenade onto the engineers here. And then are forced to back up the machine gun resetting. And here it is. <laughs> Crush just hits another mine, but is okay. Thanks all its extra health. Yeah. Tiger on the field for Jeff G. Four machine guns now for Red Wings. So only two AT guns. Panzer Jaeger in position. Oh, they, they get suppressed. They might be able to knock out this resource cache. Oh! Engineers smoked by a tiger. They just finished laying a mine and the tiger rolls up and knocks him out. Here he is pushing on. Heavy machine gun in the middle. They're all pumped up. Ooh. And AT guns on the tiger's flank. The tiger is just going to use the rapid advance. Now he's even upgrading the spotting scopes. So the extra uh, speed and vision that the vehicles get, the Tiger is just rolling away from the AT guns. And it looks like he's coming over here to finish out this resource cap, or at least deal with MG. Oof. Now Panzer Grenadiers come in, the machine guns haven't been cleared out, the AT guns chasing the Tiger, and P guns push right up through the center. Axis on a triple cap now, although uh, one machine gun for Red Wings taking up the flank here. And now, so Red Wings, he's getting another AT gun out, and he's got enough resources for an easy eight. But man, if if Jeff G does a good job microwing this tiger, Red Wings is in a really bad spot. Just because if you can't kill it and you allow it to to do damage and generate a lot of veterancy. It'll slowly just wear you down. But Panzer Grenadiers in center all forced off by multiple machine guns. Yeah, Red Wings must have been a Soviets player in Co2 because this is exactly what this feels like. Three AT guns, Tiger on the flank though. And here comes the first Easy 8 And now if I'm Jeff G, I'm very concerned. There is nothing to protect this Tiger. If the Easy 8 wants to chase it down, a couple AT gun shots come in. Ooh, white phosphorus round. And the Tiger is cornered here. First shot to the Easy 8 does a bunch of damage. And the Tiger just going to use its heavy crush to get behind some sight blockers and prevent it from being harassed by these AT guns. And so the Tiger will back away and begin repairs. AT guns retreat to the center. Uh, here we go. Here is the the automatic repairs from the mechanized support center on this point to repair the EZ-8. Well, if Red Wings can hold on to this fuel for a minute, he'll have a second one out here soon. And allowing Jeff, uh, Jeff G, allowing him to potentially mass anti-vehicle is very dangerous. Oh. Easy 8 forces off some Panzer Grenadiers. Tiger on the flank, but look at this force concentration in the middle. This is going to be difficult to break for Jeff G. And right now, Red Wings has the VP advantage. Even though he's down 358 to 180, he's got two of the three. The Easy 8, much better mobility than the Tiger. Oh. Two shots come in. I don't know how that half track survives. And there it goes. Knocked out by the Easy 8. Crowd shoots and retreats to the base. And now a P3 coming out for Jeff G. Which makes sense. He really needs uh, that ability to mass some armor and do additional damage. 
Here we go. One machine gun gonna be forced off by the Panzer Jaegers. AT guns. I like that Red Wings is not clumping them up. He's keeping them kind of in individual lanes here so that uh, if something else pushes, I'm pretty sure, you know, he knows that the Tiger's still over here, but um, additional vehicles, another P3, a walking Stuka that comes up to take a shot. Um, he's got his AT gun set up nicely. Easy 8 first shot whiffs. P3 hits the field. And these Panzer Grenadiers trying to push down. Cool. They need to clear this MG, which is suppressing the Panzer Jaegers. Machine, machine gun knocked out. Mortar takes some damage, but not as much as you'd think from the grenade. AT guns chipping away at the Tiger. There we go. Mortar will be cleared, but it'll probably drop the tube in the base. And Jeff G forced to back away here again. Crowd shoots in. Vet 2 crowd shoots in. Fighting the Vet 1 Jeep. Here comes the EZ-8. Trying to chip away the Panzer Jaegers. And now the Tiger moving back into the center. Panzer Grenadier is going to get a grenade onto this machine gun. Machine gun forced to retreat. Tiger knocks it down to a single model, but here come the AT guns, although they are bouncing on the Tiger. Panzer three on the field, but in kind of a supporting position here, not really uh, doing a whole lot. I think Je in this case, Jeff G's probably just waiting to get his infantry back out of base uh, so that he can push together. Which you never want to commit your units piecemeal if you don't have to. You always want to try to combine forces one uh, you get a lot more power and you can be more decisive, but two, sometimes you can create a micro tax on your opponent and potentially, uh, you know, get some victories that you wouldn't if you were very, you were a little bit less deliberate about your engagements. So here's the crowd shoots in, which should have absolutely excellent vision range between its static upgrade and the advanced optics. Easy 8 takes a shot, AT gun takes a shot, but only minor damage. Panzer Pioneers move up. Panzer Grenadiers on the south side, already suppressed by machine gun fire. Tiger prevents the cap of the VP in the center. And, and now, Red Wings adjusting the AT guns to take shots at the Tiger. Panzer three still kind of hanging out in the rear. Sticky gonna hit this easy eight. Red Wings has enough for a second easy 8 enough resources. Oh, there it is, it's on the way. Meanwhile, second P3 on the way for Jeff G. And I wonder if Jeff G is trying to wait to mass uh, to develop, you know, again, trying to go in and just crush the enemy. Not really sure how all this patience will, will pay off. I think... He missed his opportunity to just wipe Red Wings off the map. And now, even with the superior armor, he's facing a stalemate in the center. What he really needs at this point, I know he's getting another Panzer III out. He really needs some artillery. Something to displace these team weapons to force some retreats. So the second EZ-8 on the field, and it's going into a flank position here. Well, it's not hidden now that it's engaging these, uh, Panzer Pioneers. But I like how Red Wings is trying to spread out and set up in a way where he can really push uh, on Jeff G, maybe collapse the pocket. But here come the two Panzer Threes and some Panzer Grenadier squads. One, oh man, they narrowly dodge a mine there. Oh, hit a separate mine over on the side. Panzer 3 is going to try to displace this machine gun from this building. You, good use of the smoke there to conceal the Panzer Grenadiers. Easy 8 returning to deal with the Panzer Grenadiers. And these P3 is just going to push on the machine gun. Crowd shoots in, knocked out by the other Easy 8 in the center. There we go. Machine gun forced to retreat. 
And this will allow the P3s to capture the VP on the south side of the map. However, Red Wings already has, really, this one capped on the north side. So Red Wings about to work his way back to a triple cap. Easy 8 shot on the Tiger bounces. Tiger gets a partial penetration on the Easy 8. There we go. Easy 8 getting chunked down a little bit. AT guns try to challenge the P3s here. But they are far out of the way repairing. Tiger trying to force off the counter captain by Red Wings on the flank. Jeff G's still floating a ton of manpower. His actually his issue now is pop cap. Between the Tiger and two P3s and then all of his infantry. I'm sure his options for building are very limited. And in this case, I think it might be worth letting some of those Panzer Jaegers get knocked out in exchange for maybe a walking Stuka. Yeah, here it comes. Panzer are gonna do is try to capture in the center. Ooh, machine gun knocked out by the Tiger. B3 is pushing on the flank. They're behind one of the AT guns, but the other two are in position. Sorry, one, and they, they flank both those AT guns. Both Easy 8s flipped around. One P3 goes down, but trades out one of the Easy 8s. And here comes the Tiger pushing up through the center. Tiger versus three AT guns. Initial shots do nothing, but Jeff G does recover the center VP. Panzer Grenadier is focusing on. Uh, here's a grenade onto one of the AT guns. Another P3 being built now. One AT gun knocked out. Engineers closing. Easy 8 forces off the Panzer Grenadier squad. Tiger repairing. P3 in the south is going to keep the scouts from capping. So Jeff G able to work a slight VP advantage for now. So good push with the Panzer 3s there on the flank. Uh, I'll take an easy 8 for a Panzer 3 any day. But now a machine gun capturing up the south. The P3s have relocated, and it looks like Jeff G's decided he wants to retake the north. He's teching the advanced field repairs. And now you've got Panzerjägers capping up. Machine gun in the center was forced to retreat by the Tiger. And the P3s are going to push up here. Red Wings has enough for another easy 8. He really needs that second one out on the field. A single easy it can easily get chunked down by the tiger and then run down by those P3s. Tens of Pioneers enemy. capture the fuel and then retreat. Tens of Jaeger is going to successfully cap up the north side of the map. And so Jeff G will keep the VP pressure on. Alright, second easy 8 on the way out. And weirdly, Red Wings AT guns kind of facing the wrong direction. First shot from the tire annihilates a couple of engineers. And now the AT guns reface. And here come the Easy 8s onto the Tiger's flank. AT guns in the back, but can't keep up with the Tiger on its way back. And now they set up. The P3s come in and eat a number of shots. And so both sides forced to back up briefly. Panzer Grenadiers force up the machine gun will cap up the south, but Red Wings in a good position to cap the center. Ooh, AT guns sneak up and get a couple of additional shots off on the P3s and the Tiger. Easy 8 I'm trying to push away the Panzer Grenadiers here. They're going to throw the sticky. Not enough to do an engine crit. And Panzer gets to push all the way up. I'm trying to cap uh, the northwest side of the map here. Man. 
and they the engineers now post that patch their grease guns doing a fair amount of damage and they're able to force the panzerjägers away all right here comes the tiger and the p3s again to challenge in the center Machine gun knocked out. A salvo of AT gun rounds come in. Now, moving says four AT guns up. Whoa. Easy eight takes a lot of damage. Grenade onto the machine gun here. And now, Jeff G cycling his Panzer Grenadiers in. But man, this wall of AT guns, supported by the Easy eights, is in it, is actually able to force off this heavy DAC armor. Hands are going to the ears, knock out another scout section. They're going to take the southern VP. Although it looks like one EZ8 is already reacting. <clears throat> Engineers in place to recap. All right, now, Panzer Grenadiers and Panzer moving up. So, like I said, Jeff G still has not chosen a commander, and I feel like a lot of the, like, recce and extra smoke abilities are battle group driven. So by not choosing a commander, he's he's leaving some options on the table. Like, the armored loiter, as broken as I think the loiters are in this game, is a would be really nice for maybe knocking out one or two of these easy eights if you, an engagement goes mostly your way but doesn't end the way you want, or they're able to back up. Now Jeff G's spreading out his armor, so a Tiger on the south side. And then P3 is on the flank here. AT gun's facing the wrong way. No snares available for Red Wings. AT gun's reposition. P3 eats a number of shots, but... The Tiger is safe from an AT gun salvo for now. And Jeff G once again has the BP advantage. And at this rate, if that Tiger ever does get knocked out, he'll have the resources to essentially rebuild it immediately uh, since he's pop capped and can't really spend his resources on anything else. Pioneers laying mines. I think that may be what turns one of these engagements is a, a vehicle hitting a mine unexpectedly, allowing it to get knocked out. Oh, good MG suppression, preventing a snare from getting tossed onto the easy hit here. It looks like Jeff G's just going for it. P3's diving. One is definitely going to go down here. Yeah, one P3 knocked out. One easy eight traded. The P3 needs to keep moving if it wants to survive. Tiger actually took a lot of damage from the AT guns. Oh, he hands are three pop smoke, but the easy eight doesn't attack round. Other P3 knocked out. Meanwhile, Panzer Grenadiers whittled down quite a bit. Panzer Jaeger is clear. One of the AT guns. They could potentially knock it out here. Now Red Wing's building a Sherman Bulldozer. And Jeff G's response uh, is now to get an 88, a Flak 36 out. Tiger had to back up and repair. Sherman Bulldozer hits the field. And now Red Wing's counter capping with scouts in the north. Red Wing's might have turned this around. I, I like the bulldozer to deal with some of the infantry pushes, but I think he needs uh, either a second easy eight or a Hellcat uh, to help deal with the threat of the Axis armor. This, uh, obviously the Tiger, just one on one with an easy eight will be fine, especially with a Flak 36 in support. So I'm interested to see where Jeff G uh, throws this Flak 36. Bulldozer trying to challenge the Pennsylvania Deers. Tiger instead goes for the machine gun. 
and eats a couple of AT gun rounds for trouble. Well, it does not have the machine gun, though. Crazy. I think that boulder just bounced an 88 shot. Did not bounce that one, though. Things are going to just maintain sight. Ooh. Bulldozer takes two hard hits and we'll have to back up for repairs. Pins unit is unable to get a snare off. Machine gun cleared again. Easy eight doing a lot of damage to these Panzer Grenadiers. Tiger hits Vec 3 here. Black 36 moving up. Panzer Grenadier is focusing down the machine gun first. AT gun hits the cargo truck. Black 36 set up in the middle. Meanwhile, on the side here, Panzer Jaeger is trying to push off Red Wing's other forces as they counter Captain North. Oh, Panzer Grenadier is here in the center. They knock out another machine gun. Bulldozer is present. Black 36 is out of range to deal with it. Tiger being repaired. Hezringer's hit a mine here. So it looks like Jeff G will be able to take control of the center. And put the VP pressure back on. Red Wings down to 86. Now with the pop cap and the resource, I wonder Jeff G still hasn't built another vehicle. I think he might just be trying to make sure he has enough fuel to get a second tiger out if something happens to this one. Oh, a bunch of units whiffing shots here. Tiger gonna pursue this Easy 8. Tear gas round blinds the Easy 8. White phosphorus to counter the tiger though. And the tiger unable to continue to shoot. Now AT guns coming to support and the Tiger will not be able to pursue that easy 8 off the field. But now Panzer Jaegers on that North VP, scouts here are not really going to be able to challenge them, especially with these Panzer Grenadiers. They force a retreat. Oh, they may go down. AT guns volleying at the Tiger. Oh, scouts knocked out. Now Panzer Grenadier is able to push on the AT guns. Oh, Pioneers. <laughs> Just turned into red mist by the bulldozer. Here's the flak 36. Oh, plus the tiger, and there goes the bulldozer. Oh. Two consecutive 88 millimeter shots hit the easy eight. The flak 36 is knocked out or cleared. Immediately recruit. Tiger hunting for this other easy eight. Red Wings using a mortar team right here to cap. The tiger's on prioritized vehicles, so it's not engaging. AT guns coming in. There he goes. He takes off prioritized vehicles. Ooh, Tiger taking a lot of damage here. Another easy eight out on the field. Ooh, here come the airburst rounds onto the flak 36 but the mortar uh it looks like it was pushed off or cleared and so just one airburst round yep knocked out here by the uh, panzer grenadiers engineers capping on the south but jeff g is about to get the vp advantage again these vet 3 panzer grenadiers with all the upgrades just able to push right through the center over and over again especially now that all the mgs have been cleared and Red Wings had no mainline infantry to counter, so he's building scouts and engineers for the utility. But the risk there is obviously they're just not going to scale against infantry, and so he needs his easy eights to kind of do it all for him. His engineer is not going to last against Panzer Grenadiers, so they're just going to stand on the VP to delay the capture. The triple cap. Oh, here's the satchel. Jeff G doesn't see it. Smart play by Red Wings. And so he'll hold on to one of these VPs. Here comes the Tiger with Panzer Jaeger support against two easy eights. That engineer squad does get knocked out. Big push in the center. Black 36 chunks down the Vet 3 easy eight. White phosphorus round. 
Oh, Tiger. Great job disabling the Tiger. Black 36 can't engage anything. There it goes. White Phosphorus is even blocking its sight. Tiger knocks out one of the easy eights. The Black 36 can now shoot. Oh, the second easy eight goes down. Panzer Grenadier is able to hold on to the center VP. Scouts capping the north side. Panzer Grenadier is trying to knock out these AT guns. Red Wing's going to call good game, though. And his army composition is really next to nothing at this point. And Red Wing surrenders. All right. Welcome back, everyone. That was one, like, knockdown, drag out fight. Holy cow. Uh, so I'll just start here with the build order and then we'll get right into the analysis. So, uh, we've got Jeff G playing as the DAC, does not select a battle group, doesn't seem to need it, ends up pulling out the, the victory without it. Uh, starts with his Panzer Pioneer into a Kradschitzen, three Panzer Grenadiers, and then he goes to his tier, uh, tier two, his light support company. It's a really infantry heavy build at the start and he maintains that. He gets a couple squads of Panzer Jaegers out, one with the half track. He builds the mechanized company. I don't think he actually builds anything from it, uh, which is interesting. And I think if you're, I, I kind of want to talk to him about it. I, I wish I knew what his thought process was. Um, if he thought he was going to need the martyrs or if he thought he wanted to do the eight rod and then decided against it. Uh, but then he pretty much texts immediately into tier four of the Panzer Army Command. Uh, his infantry play allowing him to maintain really good map control through the early part uh, of the match here. And then at this point, he really starts to dig into... Uh, the DAC armory upgrades. Uh, the KD in this match was insane. I think he had like a four to one uh, for pretty much the entire match. And so he had a lot of spare manpower. Uh, and so he started investing in these upgrades to help his uh, his forces really kind of scale for the late game. Um, and so there's, like as I alluded to before, like there's some risk in that. Uh, and so we'll talk about that a little bit later. But he pretty much gets everything there except for the upgraded half tracks by the end of the game. Every single one of the upgrades uh, goes armored reserves early, and so you can see kind of at the 15 to 20 minute mark, he's decided, like, I'm going for the Tiger. There's no other reason to tech that way. There's no other reason to to not build anything but to continue to get these upgrades. So he eventually gets the Tiger out, and then he ends up getting a med truck. And really, the, his end game is a couple of Panzer threes. ends up building three of them. As he loses one or two, he eventually gets a Flak 36 out. He obviously could have had a lot more. He was not hurting for resources, but he was kind of suffering in terms of pop cap uh, for most of the back half of the game. Uh, he was just just capped out. And then for Red Wings, uh, we had almost the exact opposite. So he wanted to play the armored battle group. He wanted to start uh, with a Jeep heavy build. So he gets a second squad, uh, scout squad out, builds his barracks, gets two Jeeps, ends up building a third as well. Uh, and then gets a barracks. And I think what he's really trying to do here with the armored battle group and the initial veterancy is exactly what uh, Alpenwell did in, the, in that previous cast with the double crotchets. And he's trying to, to maintain a lot of pressure, uh, whittle down, get some free manpower bleed on his opponent. Um, and it works initially against the crotchets and the Panzer Pioneer, but the Panzer Grenadier rifles, and this is a little RNG base. And so he had some bad luck early, but those Panzer Grenadier rifles just eat through the Jeeps. Uh, and he ends up the third Jeep. He actually uses the veterancy not to allow it to capture, but to allow it to deploy weapons in his base sector. So that's where you see the HMGs coming in. He's dropping them in his base uh, instead of building a weapon support center. So he saves himself a, a little bit of fuel there uh, and a little bit of manpower doing that. Um, he texts into the mechanized support center, which uh, I really like because he's planning on the mechanized build. Gets his motor pull out relatively early. Uh, starts dropping machine guns, gets one Greyhound, uh, and then he's still, he's hurting on map control, he's hurting on fuel. So then you see a lot of team weapons come out. And this is where, I mean, I think just really impressive what he's able to do with a handful of, of the U.S. Forces team weapons, right? So uh, ends up building a total of uh, five AT guns. He has four on the field towards the end of the game, but starts with two for a while. Uh, ends up building four HMGs. He gets a mortar out. He starts to replace lost scouts and engineers as he goes. He eventually bu builds a med tent to help them deal with some of the, the health. And then he gets his, his tank depot out. And really with the with the armored battle group, with the war machine uh, kind of selection there, 
that really incentivizes him to use the production of the easy eights. So he builds three easy eights, uh, at four total, and then ends up building one Sherman bulldozer, um, which was an interesting idea. I, I understand the thought process, you know, the DAC infantry was scaling really well and really starting to chew through his team weapons. So the bulldozer there is a good counter to that infantry, uh, especially the Panzer Jaegers really didn't scale into the late game. Um, but at the time he only had one easy eight on the field. And I think with that tiger, even with all the team weapons, uh, the one thing that can really be flexible and push that tiger back is a pair of easy eights. And so if there had been a way for him to get, you know, two easy eights and then the bulldozer, he might've been able to maintain that, that critical mass. Uh, obviously eventually those team weapons get whittled down. Uh, and then he loses, loses his two tanks and ends up throwing in the GG. Now, the game was insanely long and i'm sure it was exhausting uh but he still at the end there had a chance to turn it around and so really i in terms of notes for red wings like i don't actually have a lot i think he did a really good job of looking at where he was and his strategy and adapting it to try to fit fit the enemy situation right he knew the heavy armor was coming like it had to be right he's too smart to not see that especially when his opponents had such a big field advantage for such a long time. Like when you don't see any tanks hit the field, you're like, okay, tigers come in. I got to be ready. And he was, he had his AT guns. He had them spread out. Um, he was preparing. He, he got the easy eight out on the field as well. Um, excellent use of the white phosphorus rounds to, to force the tigers initial push off. So uh, he basically went for a manpower, heavy build construction, all these team weapons, knowing that he wasn't going to have the fuel uh, and I thought he did a fantastic job countering what he could see that Jeff G was doing. It just didn't, the engagements didn't go his way in the end. Um, some of you might be saying like, well, yeah, he also didn't have any infantry on the field. And that's absolutely true, right? Th this is the weakness to this, at this attempted armored battle group build. You're not using rifles. So you're using scouts and engineers for their utility. And then the goal is obviously to get multiple vehicles out. The, the American light vehicles, the Greyhounds, the Chaffees, to get that pressure up. And I think there, there was a, a moment there not knowing what Jeff G was doing, uh, but with the decreased fuel, like a second Greyhound uh, to use as a little pack might have been really helpful in whittling down some of that DAC infantry. The Panzer Jaegers were uh, a constant threat with their ability to kind of uh, stealth or, or hide or conceal and cover. And so he had to worry about that because the last thing he wanted to do was throw away uh, light vehicles needlessly and then be even more on the back foot. Um, but with this strategy, right, I think it would have been a mistake 10 or 15 minutes into the game to suddenly try to pivot into rifles. Like I, I That doesn't make as much sense the panzer grenadiers would have just eaten them alive they're all vet three with the the lmgs and veteran squad leaders um i don't think that's the answer so i i think he played it the best way how given how quickly he was put on the back foot and he very nearly uh pulled it out there uh, i agree with the use of the shermans as opposed to the hellcats those the easy eights uh good penetration against the tiger they can handle the infantry much better uh, and they're a little bit chonkier, so they're harder to, for the Tiger to knock out. Um, and this is where we get into to Jeff G. So I want to start by saying, like, absolutely outstanding play. The fact that he uh, took this veteran, like, all the way uh, to the end and, and won and, like, didn't choose a battle group. Um, and really, like, had him on the, on the back heel from the beginning. Um, really, really impressive stuff. Uh, there were a couple things, though, that I thought were were kind of weaknesses here. So obviously, giving up that mid-game pressure and just playing with his infantry uh, and basically stalling for a, like a fully upgraded Tiger, it almost feels a little bit like a meme. Uh, and maybe it was. You know, I have no idea. Uh, maybe that was his thought process. But there's a lot of risk there, right? R you know, and Red Wings is almost able to claw back into the game because by the time the Tiger came out, the first EZ8 was almost on the field. Right. And so even with that huge fuel advantage, it didn't translate as well as he wanted to. Uh, I would like to see in the mid game something like a couple of eight rods packed together. I think he runs down some of those team weapons. You upgrade the tungsten ammunition early. Uh, you get the armor support battle group and their increased penetration. And you run down the Greyhound. You, you flank the AT guns and, and there are no riflemen to throw snares. And this game is over. Uh, 
the flag I, I agree not to go with the flag track but i think if you're also if you're not going to play with the tier three as the DAC, then you get the fire support element so you always have the option to build the at guns the other thing that he was obviously missing to me was artillery now towards the end of the game he was really really pop capped and so it's not like he could get out of walking stuka when he had the tiger and the two panzer threes but at that point in the game all the american armor is easy eights and then a bulldozer there are no light vehicles for the jaegers to prey on and so he's basically using them for capping pressure at that point i would be tempted absolutely tempted to throw them away in exchange for an isg uh or uh, a walking stuka something that can or even a couple of half tracks get the half track upgrade and get a couple of mortars on them those things start to annihilate team weapons right and as soon as you start putting manpower pressure on things like the at guns or the hmgs you knock out a couple of machine guns your panzer grenadiers advance now they can screen for the tiger and the panzer threes knock out the at guns again this game is over at like the 20 25 minute mark rather than the 45 minute mark um and that was the so really that was the biggest thing he was missing the lack of artillery and the DAC has so many good options i would like to see him lean into that a little bit more especially when he has such an incredible like manpower float kd advantage here um it's there's a risk you know i i watch a lot of uh, american football and one of the things that happens when like a good team plays a weaker team if they let them like hang around and stay in the game and let the score t- score remain too close for too long a lot of times they can end up losing at the last minute and i feel like that's almost what happened here red wings is way too good of a player way too experienced way too crafty for you to allow him to just hang around uh, for 40 minutes and he very nearly pulled it off so uh with that that's all I really have for this. Uh, really, really awesome play on both sides. Um, so I appreciate you guys sending this one into me. Uh, everyone, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.